And uh, it's time to talk to our doctor. Dr. Mankara is here from Lekma Hospital, and he's the leader of the isolation center at Lekma Hospital. We've been talking about stigma. Last week, we spoke to a 95-year-old man who recovered from COVID-19, and he was so excited about it. This morning, the focus is on health professionals. And that's because, uh, of course, there have been some numbers that have been put out there concerning health professionals who are being infected by coronavirus worldwide and in the country as well. Just yesterday, there was a news report that some health workers who got infected at one hospital in one of the regions um, recovered and they returned to work. And it was great news. Now we're going to be speaking to one doctor who had to battle the virus. And um, even though he's doing better now, he still has a story to share. So first of all, good morning to you, Dr. Mankara. Good morning, And Bella. I hope you're well. I'm doing and well. And staying safe. <laughs> I can imagine how difficult it is exactly. to avoid catching the virus whilst you're working <laughs> with people who may have the virus. Exactly. Yeah. So um, we, we'll have the doctor on the line with us shortly um, to tell us his story about how he thinks that he you know, was infected with the virus and what it cost him to do as a result, and of course, how he protected himself. But how bad is it for doctors and health workers especially? So the, um, the main issue is now, you actually don't know who has the condition or who doesn't have it, because people present various ways. So any patient that you're seeing is a potential COVID patient. Mm. So even the doctor who is not even attending to COVID patients must be very, very careful yeah. and protect himself or herself or else get exposed. So yeah. any patient at all you're, you're attending to, you have to make sure that you put measures in place to protect yourself. But how do you protect yourself when someone walks in, the person hasn't shown any signs or symptoms, probably just has a cold or has a cough? I mean, at that point, I don't think that the, the health workers are wearing their protective gears yet. And so is that probably the first point of contact for most of these health professionals? So as you're sitting there in the hospital, you have your mask on, you're wearing your scraps. Yeah. So that is the first, at least, first line protection. Mm -hmm. So you, it's quite difficult to do social distancing in the hospital with your patient. So you realize that every time you do a procedure, you have to wash your hands. Mm. If there's a procedure, you have to wear gloves, you wear the gloves. And then if you don't necessarily have to go very close to the patient, you try and see if you can maintain a bit of distance. Basically, just the little, little things. Previously, before um, COVID-19, we had infection prevention protocols that were in place, but were a bit overlooked because we never had anything like this. But now everything is being reinforced so that you follow these protocols to help prevent you getting infected. But I've seen doctors all dressed up in the protective gear still catching the virus. How does that work? That's something we have to do more research into. Because I don't understand. <laughs> you know, you have all the protective gear on. I mean, if you have the nose mask and your gloves on, could it still infect you? So it's been known that it really gives good protection. Mm. And the thing is, sometimes it's quite difficult to actually even find out the moment or the point where you are exposed. So that plays a role as well. Because mm. if, like you said, you know the patient is covered, so you go in full, like full gun, everything on. But then what if you, you didn't think the patient was a COVID yeah. patient? You may be a bit relaxed in your preparedness to protect yourself. What happens once a doctor tests positive for coronavirus? How is it treated? So even before the person, the results come positive, after the test, the person goes into self-isolation. Mm. And then when the results are confirmed, the person is sent to a treatment center. Okay. And then he's managed. Is All there any special treatment for doctors as against anybody else who may have contracted it? Well, we all treated the same. You're sure? <laughs> okay, no, the reason why I'm asking is we do understand that it's by no fault of theirs that they may have come across the virus, but also because they had to treat a patient. So, so in that case, how do you manage Considering the um, doctor in question is stable, like mm. the doctor we'll be talking to today, mm -hmm. had some mild symptoms. So if he's stable, then basically the treatment would follow the same treatment. And yeah, unless it's very critical that the patient or the person or the doctor might need extra care, mm. then maybe we we'll go all out to okay. try and help our colleague. Now, speaking of doctors who may have been infected with the virus, we have on the line with us Dr. Opong, and he will be telling us his story. Good morning, Doc. Hello, Dr. Opong. Doc, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Good morning. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, I'm doing well by God's grace. All right. Doc, tell us your story. I mean, being a frontline health worker who... Um, contracted the virus. How do you think this happened? Okay, so um, from the from the definition of frontline health worker, I don't really qualify because okay. I work in the emergency department. But 
What actually happened was before I even took the test, um, some of my colleagues had tested positive and I came into contact with some suspected cases who later on became positive. So I used it in what well, so that was basically why I did the test and unfortunately came back as positive. Okay, but then I was told that she started showing some symptoms even before you came in contact with some of these patients. Yes, yes. So I was having this mild headache, throat itch, and mild fever. But I really didn't, I overlooked it because even before this COVID era, I used to have these symptoms. And I even thought the throat itch was from the face mask I used to wear. So mm. I actually overlooked it, yes. How long were these symptoms before you came in contact with the patient? So I've always been coming in contact with patients. So um, it wasn't just one particular patient, but I used to come in contact with um, patients who come into the hospital. And some also present with non-specific um, symptoms as mm. outlined by the Ghana or service. So you may not necessarily have a high index of suspicion that, okay, this patient is a possible COVID, but we still used to take the precautions available. Okay, but before you decided to do the test, how long have you ha had you had those symptoms? So I had it for about three days before I did the test. Okay. Were you worried about whether it would come out positive and if that would affect your work? So, truth be told, I even forgot I did a test because mm. I, I was doing it because um, um, I saw a patient who I intubated and I, they did a test on the patient, so I decided to also do it on. So, I even forgot I did a test until I got a call from my boss that unfortunately the test came back as positive. So, uh, that's a, I'm assuming that you were still working around that time even after you took the test? Yes, I was still working on but, but usually, if you notice any signs and symptoms, based on advice, they say that you self-isolate or self-quarantine until your results come out, no? Um, that was what was happening. But unfortunately, some of my colleagues were also under quarantine. So our numbers were very, very limited. And at that time, it was quite impossible for me to, to um, self-isolate. But... Um, the main reason why I was going to work was because there was no high index of suspicion per the symptoms I was experiencing. I see. Okay. So after you tested positive, what happened? Because I'm sure even at that time there were still fewer doctors at the clinic. Did you yes, have to go yes. into self-isolation? So immediately I was told about the test results. I quickly had to go to the office. Um, and uh, this time myself from the, my other colleagues and the patients and um, awaited what the, the, my bosses were going to do. So they had to call, make arrangements for me to be transported to one of the isolation centers for treatment. Okay. How severe was your situation? Um, it was mild. It was mild. Um, a bit of a temperature. Severe headache, intermittent, and throat is basically less than Okay, but did you spend a, a long time at the isolation center? Um, unfortunately, I did because my retest results was a bit delaying a bit, so okay. that made my stay there prolong. So how long was that? Um, three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks of yes, being in an isolation center. Were you able to come in contact with other patients who were there as well? Um, so there were other patients who also had their roles, but we had a designated perimeter where we used to come out and talk. But any time we come out, we have our face masks on, we obsessed social distance. So we actually interacted, created an ambience where anyone who comes in as a new patient is able to feel um, at home and wouldn't be an alien amongst us. But how did you feel about contracting the virus and how did your family and friends treat you? Um, so, at, initially, I was in denial, but afterwards, I was a bit worried because um, I stayed with my family and unfortunately, I thought um, I could have um, infected them, but mm -hmm. thankfully, their test results all came back um, negative. negative. And what okay. I did was, um, because I knew I was working at a, a highly infectious place, whenever I come home, I quickly take off my uh, my clothes, 
we went straight to the bathroom and we keep the contact I used to have with my parents. So mm. I think that also helped a lot. I see. But th that means that you also had to undergo two tests before you were confirmed um, as one of the recovered individuals? Yes. Oh. Yes, yes. yes. Are you back That's to work standard. now? Um, no, I, I, I came home just last week, so psychologically I, I may need some time off before I go back to work because unfortunately that's where I got the infection and I don't know how long these antibodies will be active. So, so that means that you're scared of the environment that you may have contracted the virus from? Um, unfortunately so, I'm scared, but um, we, are, we are yet to pass that space. Were you, uh, you know, was there a psychologist that spoke to you throughout your um, days at the isolation center and even after? Um, yes, we had one psychologist who used to come around to speak to the patients and I had my session as well. Okay. Do you still see the psychologist? Um, not having contacted any of them yet, but okay. I'm just trying to, okay. Is it the duty of the patient to contact? And I'm just asking because you are also a doctor, so maybe you're privy to some of this information. Who's supposed to contact who? I mean, is it the um, patient who should get in touch with a psychologist? Or do you have a schedule as to when the psychologist can call you and find out how you're faring? Yes, yeah, so they have our contact and details. And um, before we got the start, um, they told us if there's anything, we should um, contact them. So I came home and just um, on... Thursday that I came home, so I'm here to make a call to okay. the dollar meeting with them. Okay. Well, anyway, thank God that you've recovered. And I can imagine the psychological trauma. I really do hope that you get over it so you can go back to work and save more lives. So we pray God protects you. Thank you so much, Dr. Pong, for sharing your story with us. All right. So I don't think he heard me, but that was Dr. Opong from one of our uh, major hospitals in the country and he contracted the virus. And it's interesting that yes. a doctor says that he first was in denial when he tested positive. I would have assumed that doctors who may have a clear understanding of the virus would welcome it with open hands because whether you like it or not, it's very likely that you might come into contact with a patient who has COVID-19. Well, I think the reality of actually testing positive, it's a bit different. Because it's different reading about something, and it's different actually having it. And it's, it's, what he said is quite practical, and we've seen it countless times. Mm. So you talk to a health worker, and the person doesn't even believe that the person is positive, mm -hmm. or he or she is positive. That's I find surprising. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. I don't know if my viewers think same as well, because like I said, that's a doctor. They ha probably have more information on the virus than we do. And so then you assume that... If I've tested positive, well, it's part of the job. I mean, no? Uh, doctor's are only human. I know, exactly. <laughs> but he's also dealing with a psychological trauma as well. Exactly. There's a whole psychological aspect of this condition, not just linked to the virus itself, but the psychological part of it, which is quite... Um, and it's, it's different from everyone. Everyone and how they assimilate every situation, how they're able to adapt to the situation, and how they move up or move out from it. So that is an important part of it. Like he said, he's not psychologically ready to be back in that environment and that's a normal thing that's a normal thing okay because you you when you're in the hospital like you do know that you are like in a war zone because anything mm. can happen to you and everything so there's a whole psychological aspect um, in being a doctor in general now with the added um risk of COVID 19 and then you keep on reading that it seems health workers outside we were hearing that health workers are getting the the bitter end of the stick. We're mm -hmm. having more serious conditions, more complicated ones. But so I think all these play a role in making it a bit difficult and the psychological aspect as well, making it quite difficult to get back into the environment. The reason why I want to talk about psychologists, because he says he has not gotten in touch with his psychologist yet. And I thought that there should be a plan for patients, whether recovered or battling with COVID-19. You should have a schedule for psychologists to get in touch with you. So he's been home for a week now. And he, lives, I know, he recovered. He went home on Thursday. Last on week, Thursday. Thursday. Yes, okay, yes. so we're, we're we're almost there. But mm -hmm. then you'd assume that a psychologist would have gotten in touch with him, especially because he says he's dealing with a psychological trauma of having to go back to work, the same place he contracted the virus. Shouldn't we have a psychologist working on him on a daily? 
So the thing is, usually they give some psychological exercises that you're supposed to do. Even for as uh, psychologists always bring these things up that you do, and then later report to them how it's helping. Are you improving? Mm. Has there been a change, or are you worsening? Then they see how best they can help. And after recovery, there are these post-recovery follow-ups that they do. They have like weekly, weekly, then two weeks, then four weeks, then I think three months that you do follow-ups. Okay. So during these follow-ups as well, that is also assessed and then if need be to refer back to the psychologist to hear from you. How do we then get him ready for the environment? And moving forward, how do we further protect health workers? Um, you know, because he says that he was still covered and still experienced the symptoms, then tested positive. So that means that they are not fully protected. You are not fully protected. How do we protect the environment for health workers and for so, anybody who works in the hospitals as well? I believe the best you can do is make sure you use the PPEs, wash your hands, and as much as possible, try to socially distance yourself from people. It may, that's the thing, you, you never know who you'd be exposed to or who would expose you to the virus. So you have to be careful any patient you're attending to. So the thing is, most of the time, you don't... Um, a patient comes in normally, we know heart failure is a condition that comes in. We've treated a lot of heart failure patients. They come in, your mind is heart failure, heart failure, heart failure. Mm -hmm. So your mind is not really on COVID because this is a known patient of heart failure and everything. But you realize the next day, the next day, two days, the patient is not improving. Then it becomes a suspected case. Mm -hmm. But the patient initially was not a suspected case. Yeah. So usually the carefulness you attach when attending to a suspected case is different from when you think the patient is not a suspected case. Because if anyone comes in like, oh, I'm coughing, chest pain, fever, mm -hmm. everyone is red alert. May not even be coughing, but everyone is red alert. But yeah. then if the patient comes in with something else, then it becomes a whole issue. Later on, as things unfold, you realize that the person changes from a normal patient to a suspected case, and it becomes a whole hmm. lot. That's very scary, but uh, we hope that God continues to protect you all. And we hope that you have enough PPEs. And that will bring me to that question, because are there enough PPEs for health workers? We need more. Hmm. Anyway, I've been speaking to Dr. Amankara. He is the lead at the uh, Lekma Isolation Center. And he has ample knowledge about COVID-19 and how it's affecting Ghanaians uh, all across the country, especially at the isolation center as well. And so we hope to have him on again next week to tell us more. But thank you so much You're for joining welcome. us this morning.